so I don't, last time I forgot completely. Um, I have um, posted a PDF in the chat area um, that'll just kind of highlight some of the things that I'll be going over today, so feel free to, to download that. Did anybody go to the birds of a feather stuff? Has that already gone on? Yep, we did. Cool. Was that cool? Yeah, it was just a really informal. There, I think there were about six or seven of us on it. That's all. That's but we cool. just talked about what we're doing for fitness. What are we doing to stay in shape? Uh, Mary Jo Chisholm and I are both. Uh, Spectrum is offering a whole food plant based series for four weeks, I think. And so we both happened to be signed up for that and didn't know it. So we were talking about that. Oh, that's cool. How do you get signed up for that? You know, I don't know how I get the emails, but I do. And it's through Spectrum Health uh, Lifestyle. Oh, Culinary Spectrum Medicine. Health. I don't care about So if you I just Google that, maybe. I don't care about this one. Um, I'll have to check that out. Okay. <laughs> We got a couple more minutes as people are coming on. Um, in the chat, I did post a PDF to share that kind of highlights some of the things I'm going over. So if you didn't catch that, go ahead and download that when you get a chance. Um, if you want to post questions in there as we go through this, feel free to. I'll try to keep an eye out on it. Rachel, did you say your attachment's in the chat? Should be. I don't see anything in chat. Yeah, I, I don't see it yet either. Let me try, I'll try again. I see it on my end. Is it there now? Yep. So do you not see my hello everyone message either? I wonder if that's because nope. I did it when no one was in here. Learn as you go. <laughs> All right. Well, it is one o'clock. I'll go ahead and, and get started and people can come and go as they please. So welcome to GRCC Accounts Explain. I'm glad to see some of your happy faces today. Hopefully learning day has been going really well for you and you've gotten to have some good experiences. Um, I will um, be um, trying to monitor the chat as best as I can. Sometimes it's a little awkward um, when you're going through your um, presentation and watching something to the side. So feel free to also interject as I'm talking. If you have questions about anything that I'm saying, I really don't mind if you pop in and say, hey, I got a question about that. So you know, feel free to, to do that if you like. I am I'm going to move you guys over here and I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Should say GRCC accounts explained? Yes. yes All right. Yes. Perfect. I'll just kind of get situated here. All right. I think I can actually see everybody. But. I don't know what happened to the chat. There we go. Okay, I think we're all set. So this is GRCC Accounts Explained. I'm Rachel Bauer. I work at the IT Help Desk. Um, most of you I think I've talked to at some point in time or another. Um, and our goal for today is to kind of walk you through the MyGRCC account um, from the perspective of a student as well as from a staff. So that way, like if, if you're working with students, you have the ability to kind of help them firsthand if they're running into issues. And also maybe I'll show you some tips and tricks that maybe you hadn't ever noticed before or knew before. That'll be, um, you know, enlightenment for you. Um, so some topics that we're gonna cover 
is the MyGRCC um, online center, student email, staff email, Blackboard, campus printing, campus Wi-Fi, storage drives, software center, VMware, Google Drive, the IT support portal, and Office 365. So hopefully when you looked at um, the description for the class today that maybe some of the stuff was things you thought about or maybe there's some things on here that you hadn't ever thought about. And so um, we'll explore all of it though. And like, as I said, if you have questions as I'm talking, please feel free to just pop up, especially if I don't catch a chat that's in the, in the message area. Um, the MyGRCC portal is a new single sign-on application that we just instituted like in October. Um, so it's a it's a single sign-on source. So you, the object of it is that you sign into that, and then you have access to all of your accounts without having to keep continually sign into everything throughout your day. Um, so for students right now, um, they kind of just see the online center and Blackboard and the G Suite. Um, but for us, we're, we're continually adding more things for staff and faculty. So as we keep making the system more robust, you'll see more features added to that as we go along. Anyone logging into that portal for the first time will need to click the first time user option. So even if you had been, you know, if a student had gone here years before and is coming back, they sometimes think that they don't qualify as a first time user, but anybody signing into that portal for the first time needs to click the first time user option. So on that particular sign in page, you'll notice in the um, sign in area there that there is that first time user option in the lower left hand corner. When they click that, they'll be um, asked to put in their ID number. We've all been very used to inputting our ID number with the W on it, but that's no longer necessary. So for this system, you just need to put in the number only. So if someone's having issues with the system, it might be because they're trying to input their information with that W. Next, they'll have to confirm their date of birth. Um, so that too is very specific as how it's entered. It needs to be entered very similarly to the example shown. So just to make sure that it has slashes rather than dashes. And the month and the day need to be two digits, not just one. So if you have a birthday in January, for instance, as the example shows, make sure to put a zero in front of that. Once you've confirmed your information, it's gonna actually show you your username. So this is where if a student doesn't know their username, this is, they can kind of start going through this process to, to see that information. Um, this will, is also where it'll let you create your password. And passwords always need to have at least 10 characters, have at least one uppercase letter, as well as one number. Once you create that password, you'll get another confirmation that says you're all set and it will also show you your username again. This part of the screen only displays for about five seconds before it goes back to the sign in screen. So if they miss their username anywhere in there, traditionally it's gonna be first and last name more than likely. If they have a really common name, there could be numbers appended to it. Um, we just did a name change for someone this morning who was I think it was Melanie Smith, and they ended up being Melanie Smith 15. <laughs> so we must have a lot of Melanie Smiths in our system. If they also have a really long name, like maybe two hyphenated last names, then the, la the, the username might be truncated a little bit. So those are the only anomalies that could happen. Otherwise, it's typically just first and last name. Also too, if you were, have been working here for quite a long time, um, such as myself, um, you might just have first initial last name. But for all new students, new employees, pretty much can guarantee it's gonna be first and last name. Once you are able to sign into the MyGRCC portal, it's gonna prompt you to set up your password recovery settings. Um, we highly recommend that you do it right when you first sign in if you have the time to just because getting back to it at another point in time sometimes doesn't happen. And if you should forget your password or if your students forget their passwords and they didn't set up that information, they will have to call us in order to get their password reset. Um, when you do click it and set it up, it's gonna have you set up security questions and email recovery to a personal email address as well as a phone recovery so it can text you. Every time you sign into the system, if you did not set, sorry, if you did not set, I 
don't know why it keeps jumping off of that. If you did not set your recovery options, this prompt will come up. It doesn't want to stay there. So you'll get the option every time you sign in if you didn't at any rate to set it up. Um, and then once you sign in, this is the view the student sees. They see Blackboard, the online center, the online center with the screen reader mode, as well as the G Suite. As staff, we might see something a little bit different, and it just depends on your access too. So if you have CS Prod access, you will most likely see the tiles for CS Prod there. Same with HR Prod, those tiles will be there too. And like I said, as we um, add more resources to this, you'll have more things available to you in the future. After you sign in, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see My Apps, My Account, and Change Password. If you click on your Hello username up there, um, the My Apps will just bring you back to seeing the Blackboard I tile and the Online Center tile and so forth. The My Account, that's where you can click on that to update all of your um, password recovery settings. So maybe if you change your personal email, get a new phone, something like that, or you want to update those security questions, you can do so under my account. And then, of course, you can change your password. The MyGRCC login credentials are the same credentials you're going to use for pretty much every other account on campus. So whenever you're asked for your username or password, it's pretty much going to be the same credentials you're using for the MyGRCC portal. So therefore, the campus network login it's going to from now on be referred to as the MyGRCC login credentials. So again, those credentials are good for like campus computers, printing, the campus Wi-Fi, um, Raider card deposits, um, students will use it for the scholarship application page, um, things of that nature. If you are on campus or if a student is on campus and they can't log into a campus computer, from the campus computer, they can type in at the username and as well as the password lookup, all lowercase, all one word, and that will prompt them into the password reset tool. Again, this can only be done on campus. Um, yep, sorry about that, Brian. Yep, you do need to be on campus to change credentials. Um, for the lookup process. If you're at home and you need to update your password, you can do so um, at the MyGRCC portal or by clicking in this grcc.edu forward slash password. Um, the only thing you will notice is if you change your password when you're at home, that password will not sync with the, your campus computer. So with your, like if you're on a laptop from GRCC, um, you will have to use your old password on it. So the only way to get the new password to sync with your computer is to come to campus and sign into it. You don't necessarily have to come to your office to do that. We have extended the Wi-Fi um, up at the admin building at the DeVos campus to the parking lot. So if you do need to do something like that to get your computer back on the network for any reason or to do any kind of updates, you can just go into the, camp the parking lot of the admin building and do it from there. And so if you do want to resync your new password with your computer, you can even just go to the, the parking lot. That'll make it a little bit easier than having to come into a building and fill out the um, COVID form and stuff. Rachel, does that, does that work the other way as well? For example, I was at the Lakeshore campus. I signed into a lab computer there and I had to change my password, but my laptop at home is still using the old one. So is it is that I need to get the laptop to campus to have it sync? Okay. Yep, correct. Yep. Any other questions about that? And that that should be happening automatically. So I'm right because I'm I'm having an issue with I changed my password, but so my Blackboard and GRCC password are the same. But when I try to use if I try to log into um gmail i have to use my old password still gotcha that should not be happening it should have all changed when i changed it should have yes so the only thing that typically i find happens when that happens is that perhaps you didn't um, have the all the requirements for the password when it was set 
Um, also, if you're forced to set the password locally on the computer, like let's say you go to sign into the computer and it says your password's expired and it just does a quick prompt on that login page for you to reset it, that's not resetting it for that. It's just resetting it for some local accounts and it doesn't sync with everything. So if you notice your account not syncing properly across all of your accounts, aside from just signing into the computer. I just recommend resetting it once more. Um, and you'll want to do that, making sure to use at least 10 characters and have at least one uppercase letter and one number. Unfortunately, with the new system that we have, we don't have a way of making it display that information for you or making, making you actually have those credentials. But we find that if you don't have those, meet those requirements, sometimes that also affects the way it syncs across your accounts. So if you need to go back in and reset your password and you're having any issues with that, feel free to give us a call because we can certainly help you sort okay. that out and make it go correctly for you. Any other questions about syncing, syncing your password or changing your password while off campus? Our passwords do expire every 120 days, so it's pretty much every semester we're supposed to be changing them. So hopefully most of us by now have done that since working from home. I'm sure we've kind of been forced to. Um, so, but if you ever run into problems with it, please don't hesitate to give us a call because we're, we're more than happy to walk you through anything. Um, so the, one of the, um, apps that's in the my grcc portal is the online center hey rachel um, yeah sorry before you move off of the the grcc the single sign-on sure um what causes that to i'll use the term timeout for example or to not for example I'll, I'll pull up a browser i'll open a window i'll do the login there and then uh i'll open another window in that same browser and go to Blackboard, but I'll have to log in again. Uh, or I'll come back to the sign in page and it has disappeared, timed out, and then I have to log into everything again. Is that, am I doing something wrong with the single sign on? I think there's about a half hour um, timeout of inactivity. So if there isn't any activity going on within the portal, just for security purposes, it does time out and require re authentication. But when I go to another window in the same browser, I should not have to log into another app, right? I, I should be like if I did the online center in one window, a tab, I should say, a tab, and then I go to another tab and I, I go to Blackboard, that that should just let me into Blackboard, right? I think if you're going to Blackboard via like the Blackboard like link, like that old bb.grcc.edu, it's it needs to kind of go back through the portal. So what it does is I think it tries to re-authenticate you through the portal. If you're clicking on the tile from the portal, then you probably won't see that issue occurring. But if you're going to another tab and then trying to go to a link for Blackboard, it's trying to go back through the portal because everything's kind of directed through that. But if so, maybe next time just try to click on Blackboard from the actual um, app page itself. So the see key if that is doesn't, to key is to launch those things from that landing page. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All Otherwise, right. it just kind of re does a redirect. So all of the former web pages that we had for those are basically doing a redirect back through the portal. So I think that's why you're seeing that. Those that that web pages, sounds right. Those web pages are still valid and still work. They just are doing a redirect, basically. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Does that make sense for everybody? All right, cool. So the online center for um, students is the place where they register for classes, they check their financial aid, um, they um, pay their tuition. Um, it's a lifetime account because that's where they also get their transcripts from. So everybody will have their access to their online center forever. Staff and faculty use it for the same purposes as students do, especially if they're obviously taking classes. But then as staff, we also can um, do our payroll information through there, um, check our um, training history, um, things like that. And then 
faculty will use it to post the grades for students and do their attendance checks and things like that for them. Um, HR wants to make sure that we know that that's where we can update our um, contact and for our emergency contact information too. So please make sure that any of your emergency contact information is updated in the online center. And then student email is a their primary source of communication um, that we can have with our students is through as their, through their student email account. Um, if you can, if you're working with any students, try to make note to them that their student email should only be used for GRCC purposes and not for personal um, email because once they are done going to school at GRCC, that account will deactivate. So they will no longer have access to their emails um, later. So we have gotten calls from students before who have definitely used it for personal purposes and then they can't access their, the things that they had in there that they might need. Um, the only way that they can get access to it again is if they re-enroll. So the student email account varies from ours just by having that word email in it. So it's their username and then at email.grcc.edu. Mm -hmm. So some typical troubleshooting with the email is like students, a lot of times, brand new students, sometimes they'll be here for a whole semester or two and don't even realize that they have an email account. Um, so please, if you make sure to let your students know that that's the way you're going to be communicating with them and that they do in fact have one. They don't always know what their email address is. So if you can share with them that it'll be their MyGRCC login username with that at email.grcc.edu appended to it, that would be helpful. If you reset your password, and this is true for faculty and staff as well, if you reset your password, it's gonna take anywhere from five to 15 minutes for your new password to sync with your email account. You should be able to log into the MyGRCC portal and have access to Blackboard and the online center and your computer immediately, but um, Gmail just takes us a little bit longer for that password to sync. And so that's the same with students too. So if a student comes to you and says for whatever reason that they can't sign into their email, ask them if they just recently reset their password. Um, you might have also noticed when we switched over to Gmail that if you had a personal Gmail account and you clicked on like the email link on our homepage or something that it automatically logged you into your personal account. And that's because Google's really smart and knows that that's the main account you've been accessing on your personal device or on your work computer. So what users need to do is from within their personal account, they need to click on the profile icon in the upper right hand corner. And then you'll see an option that says add another account. And then you just type in your, your school email address and your password and then that account will now be there. They won't mix the two accounts together, but you can toggle between the two. And that's what students will need to do as well. And so that's now our primary source of communication for us as well. Um, you should have a link for Gmail on your um, laptops, your GRCC issued computers, or you can go to gmail.com or mail.grcc.edu. There are some file size restrictions for anything that you're trying to share via email. Um, 25 megabytes is about the file size capacity that we have. If you try to send anything larger than that, it's going to create a link to your Google Drive and send the link instead, um, which works pretty well. If you have files that you need to send that are larger and also you need them to be sent securely, either within GRCC or to an outside entity of GRCC, you can use a resource that we have called FileLocker. If you do need to use that resource, we'll need you to submit a request to us so that we can grant you access to it. But FileLocker is, is a secure way of sending large files that we offer. Um, so people in the dental clinic, for instance, use this to send like dental records securely to an outside source, you know, an, an outside um, dental area that they might be sharing records with. So that's like a, a for instance of how that's used. Hopefully most of you know about Archive. Um, before when we had GroupWise as our email platform, 
um, all of our emails, anything sent and anything received within a 24-hour period were archived in what we call retain. Um, so that is something that would um, house all of our emails for a period of about three years. So we'll still have access to this for a few more years yet. So if there is anything in GroupWise that you didn't you know, get out of there that you needed, you still have the ability to go into Retain um, and get any of those archived emails. And so that is at archive.grcc.edu. Um, you use your My GRCC login credentials for that. It's a little bit kind of cumbersome to navigate sometimes and find emails. So if you do need to um, do that and you're having trouble with it, just give us a call and we're happy to walk you through that as well. Blackboard is our learning management system on campus and it just went through a major upgrade that finished last night. So hopefully if you're a Blackboard user, you've had time to check out the new Blackboard today. Um, if you need um, training on that or, or more instruction on it, we encourage you to reach out to Distance Learning and Instructional Technologies or the Center for Teaching of Excellence. Um, even on their website, they do have quite a, a bit of helpful information. I should also mention that their um, Blackboard itself has a web page. It's help.blackboard.com, and they have a, a lot of great information on that as well. And so this is what the new Blackboard page kind of looks like. Just a bit of a different header for the most part. Um, printing on, a, on campus, um, I'm sure most of you are, are aware how this works, but just in case, um, you have the Follow Me printers on campus, basically. So if you can print from your office, you choose the either the black or the gray or the color printer and then you can go anywhere on campus and swipe your your radar card and now your print job will appear at that particular printer um, the nice thing about that is that you're you don't ever have to worry about your print job getting combined with anybody else's um, it just will print whenever you are ready for it to print and it finds you anywhere across campus um, you'll get a print notification dialog box when you do print um, and it'll have a different radio buttons for charging options. And you always want to make sure that you're charging to a shared account and you should have an account displayed on your print dialog box that shows your departmental account on there. If it's on the charge to my personal account, if you have money on your radar card, funds will be deducted when you go to print. Um, if you don't have any money on your radar card when you go to the printer, it'll tell you that there were no funds available and that just should alert you that you need to switch back to your shared account for printing. <clears throat> yeah? Thought I heard somebody, sorry. Sorry, I did ask you a question. How oh. long does a um, how long does it stay in the queue for printing if you don't go and print right away? I want to say it's eight hours. I think it's eight up to eight hours. Okay. Thanks but two hours is also sticking in my brain for something. There's so many different time frames that are up here for different things. Anywhere from two days, that's a big time frame, but um, that should hopefully, even two hours I would hope would give you enough time to get to the printer and get what you needed, but it could be eight. Um, but if you're on campus and you need to print from a personal computer, this would be for your students, and this would also be for any adjunct faculty who do not get computers issued to them. Um, here are instructions for how to print this link that's on here, um, which I believe also the instructions are included in that handout. Um, but these, there's new instructions for how to print from your personal computer while on campus. So previously we used to use Google Cloud Print, but Google ended that service as of the end of December. And so now we are using paper cut mobility. I have not personally had an experience with this yet because we just started it and I have not been back to campus yet. Um, but obviously if you have any questions at all, if you're using that service when you're on campus, feel free to give us a call and we will help you through it. Um, but again, that's gonna be through paper cut mobility and there's a, a really good extensive um, knowledge base article on our portal too that gives you the detailed instructions. That's what this link is through. Print to yeah. your cell 
What's that? Can I print through my cell phone? You can, yep. Just using that paper cut, right? Correct, yep. So I believe there are instructions that kind of parsed it out, like if you were on a Windows machine, um, a Mac machine, or even an iOS device, I think there were different instructions kind of for each, each one of those. Any other questions about printing? Additionally, since we're working from home, if you have a home printer that you want your campus computer to print to, um, you can submit a ticket to us and we can help assist you get those print drivers installed on your, in your um, school issued computer as well. So when we're on campus and you wanna use the campus Wi-Fi, there are three different options. These options are available to anybody with my GRCC credentials. So staff, students, faculty, everybody can use these three different options. Um, actually, the Raider guest option is open to anybody, any guest that's even visiting campus. Um, so GRCC and wireless and GRCC secure are mainly what we wanna be using. Um, GRCC secure is a little bit faster because it blocks all high bandwidth sites which means like you can't stream um, video on there, like you can't stream Netflix, you can't game, you can't download music and things like that nature. It's made specifically so that you can just get to sites to be able to do your, do your work while you're on campus or for students to be able to do their schoolwork while they're on campus. When you use GRCC Secure and you sign into it, um, every time you come back to campus, you're auto-authenticated into it. So you don't have to continually keep signing into it over and over again. So that's usually my go-to. Um, GRCC Wireless is nice because it is more open. So you can um, watch you know, movies in between classes or um, game and all that kind of stuff, but it's a little bit slower in that case. You also have to sign into it more often. So I find sometimes even walking from room to room all of a sudden my connection will be dropped and I'll have to re-sign into it again. So that's another reason why I just like to use secure is because I don't really have to think about logging in if I just stick with secure. Um, so the only time I usually sign out of secure is if I find I need to download an app on my phone or I need to get to a site I'm not able to reach and then I can go to GRCC wireless and then I can usually access those. And then Raider Guest is something that we just started a few years ago on um, behalf of Dr. Pink's request. It, and it's so that we can have a Wi-Fi option for guests who just come to campus unexpectedly or just on the fly and they need to have guest access to our network like that. So they can authenticate with um, their phone or with their computer and then they'll have access for 12 hours. This is great for like parents coming to campus or maybe you have a friend coming for the afternoon or to meet you for lunch or something and they just need the Wi-Fi for a little bit. It's perfect for those kind of situations. If you still have large groups coming to campus that are expected, we highly recommend that you still send us um, the request for the guest wireless accounts that we do create. If you're not familiar with those, we, we can create wireless um, accounts for guests um, as well as um, network login accounts for guests like if um, you have a public speaker coming and they actually need to use a campus computer we can give them access for like that particular day but those requests need to come directly from you um, um, to our ticketing system and then we'll, we give you those credentials but if they're just coming and they need quick access please direct them to use that reader guest option any questions about the Wi-Fi at all? Perfect. And then you all have access to the storage drive. So the S drive is um, department driven. So there's thousands and thousands of folders on the S drive, but you only have access to the ones that um, pertain to your role. If there is a folder that you're supposed to be able to see that you are not, your supervisor will need to send us um, a request to have that access granted to you. Um, and then the J drive, everybody has a J drive account. That is your personal storage space. Only you have access to that. You have about 15 gigabytes worth of space on that to use. Um, if you exhaust that space, um, you're just asked to go back through your files and see if there are things that you can eliminate um, to make more space for yourself. Or you can move the files over to your Google Drive account. 
um, your Google Drive account has an unlimited amount of space. So you can always move files there as well. And that's what, what it looks like when you go to it. I don't know why it keeps jumping. And then the software center is, um, so we are, due to security, um, unable to download anything off of the web or install any programs on our campus computers, just in case if we might end up installing something malicious that goes along with that. <clears throat> so what we have created is something called the software center. And if you go to your start menu on your um, computers, and you start typing the software center, it should open. When you're off campus, it does take a while for that thing to open and it won't work off of campus anyway. You won't be able to download anything from it, um, but you could see what it looks like, which is this. Um, so once you open it, it basically has quite a bit of the software that is available to you on campus that is also licensed. And then if you You'll see all the various icons for those. And then once you click on a piece of that software, um, you will see an option to install or uninstall if it's already installed or even update. <clears throat> so if there's programs there that you see that maybe you don't have on your computer but you would like, because there's also like a description of what that particular program is for, then you could, if you go to campus, you could have that program installed. There are a few of them on here that we can install remotely for you. So check with us first before you make the trip to campus to see if it's something that we can install remotely for you or if you will need to do it through um, the software center while on campus. The if auto you, update when we come on campus, like if a new version comes out, does it automatically update? It should update, yes. Um, I guess it also depends though how far back you are in updates. So sometimes if, if you've missed a couple, it might not automatically update anymore, and then you would have to come in and then update it yourself. So if it's on your, uh, like your uh, portable MacBook, you'd have to bring it to campus and log in to, to the wireless in order to have the software update? Yeah, and, and unfortunately, the software center isn't available on any of the Mac computers. It's only on the PCs. Oh. So I but, but yeah, typically for any kind of updates, if you, you need to come to campus to get things updated, or if you notice something is, is wrong, because we've been trying to send out communications that tell you how to update certain things on your own. <clears throat> but if for some reason there's other things that say they need an update that you're not able to, feel free to give us a call. And sometimes there's ways that we can remote in and update, update those things for you without you having to come to campus. Mike like Microsoft Office, uh, Word, Excel, um, to update. Uh, I can't update those on my own, on my MacBook. I have to bring my MacBook in. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Any other questions about the Software Center? Okay. So, no, I, I, I do have a question. So, the uh, software that's listed in the software center, that is the full selection of software that could be installed in our computers, what, what you're showing right now. Nothing mine, else. Mine will be a little bit different than everybody else's just because I, I have the things available to me for testing purposes and that. So you might not see everything that I see. Um, same thing with like um, lab computers won't have everything on them that you would see. Um, so there's kind of different pools of, of what you will see in, in your particular software center. Um, well, what if, I mean is, sorry, well, what if there's uh, some other software that I would like to install that is, you know, freely available and safe and secure, but it's not part of this list? What happens then? Then you can just send us a request for that. Um, we have to have our, our security team look at it to make sure that it is okay and also to see if there's any kind of licensing restrictions on things, and then they'll, they'll either grant you that permission or find you a different resource, or, or, um, or maybe it will be denied altogether. But it has to be you know, vetted out first. So just send us what we typically need is to know if, if there's like an extension or something that you're looking for for a web browser, we just need the link of it, or um, even the link to a product that you're looking to 
buy that's not an extension. But then they'll fully look into it and see if it needed to be licensed or if there's any vulnerability problems with it. And then they'll either go through the process of, of getting that for you and making sure it's installed or um, finding you hopefully an alternative. Got it, thank you. Sometimes we already have something that's similar to what you're looking for. And that's also why it needs to go through that process so that we're not um, putting more resources into things that we actually already own. Any other questions about software? Cool. I'm sure most of you are very familiar with VMware by now. Um, VMware is, is what we use to access the campus network from while we're at home. If anything, you'll have been having to use it just to submit your timesheets. But if you needed to access your J drive, the S drive, um, CSPROD, FSPROD, and things of that nature, you would do so through the VMware. Um, you can either install it. it. It should be on every um, campus computer. But on your home computer or a student's computer, they can either install the program by going to mydesktop.grcc.edu. There's an option to install it. And then there's an also an option for the HTML version. If you click on the HTML version, you just log into it through a browser. So it's a very simple way of getting access to the VMware. Um, students, a lot of our labs, because our labs have been closed, and sometimes some of the software that they use were only available to, in the labs, like expensive software that they can't purchase and put on their own computers. So we've created um, a special VMware pool for them that they can find into and access our software that would normally be on our lab computers. So um, that is an option for students. Google Drive, I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, Google Drive is where you can, through your, your um, Gmail account, basically you have access to Google Drive, which gives you access to Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, which is very similar to Word and PowerPoint and Excel. Um, it, it's available to you wherever you have internet access. You can share files. You can simultaneously be working on files as someone else's. Um, I absolutely love it and use it all the time. Um, you also have a team drive in there that's available to your department. Um, so you can um, share de files departmentally. Usually that drive was created and under like the department head or the head of that particular department. And then they would um, grant permissions to it um, as people, you know, were either hired or um, at the time they should have just added everybody in their department. Um, but it works very similar to, to like the S drive to where you can just have all your departmental files on there that you're sharing. Um, we just ask that you don't keep any student personal information in there. So like um, we wouldn't want any files in there with a bunch of um, student ID numbers or social security numbers or anything like that on there. Um, but with Google Drive, you have unlimited amounts of storage space. So that's also where we were recommending you store like your videos for your courses and things of that nature, and then having links from Google Drive and placing them in Blackboard rather than storing the actual video in Blackboard. Because your, your black, if you're a faculty member, your, <clears throat> your Blackboard um, content area is kind of minimal as well. So you kind of run out of space in there. We have a... Our, a I have a question about the backup that you were mentioning. Um, so currently I am at the end of the semester, I back up like my hard drive on Google Drive. Mm -hmm. And that includes, you know, student names, ID numbers and grades. Should I not be doing that then for their grades or? So I'm not sharing that drive with anyone. I'm just using that for my own backup purposes. Right. Um, we're, we just have security concerns about that to where our S drive and the J drive are, are more secure. Um, so we recommend not having personal information on there for the students. Um, I don't think there would be a problem with grades, but if there's information in regards to their ID numbers or um, social security numbers and things like that, we would recommend storing them probably to your J drive. Okay, for backup, okay. Any other questions about that? All right, we have um, the GRCC IT status page as well. So um, the status page is where you can see the status of all of our services. 
um, this will, if you come to this, which it's um, grcc.edu forward slash status. And I believe on everybody's campus computers, um, when you open a web browser, it's already a saved bookmark on there for you. But this is where you can see all of our services and whether one is affected, um, whether there's a current maintenance going on to it or whether there's an actual incident occurring. Um, if you are experiencing an, something going on with a service, you know, like Blackboard, your email, phones, anything like that, you can call us to, or you can go here first and see if there's a known issue going on. If you don't see anything listed, it might be that you're the first one experiencing something, or it might it might just be something affecting you that we can resolve over the phone, or um, you might have just discovered an, a campus-wide issue that we need to update on here. So this is manually updated, um, so we definitely need your assistance in discovering when things are wrong so that we can update this. And we try to update it as quickly as possible when an issue does occur. And so you will see from those circles, um, like in this particular instance, there were 25 services that were working just fine and one that was affected. And then if you scroll down on that particular page, there should be a blurb about what exactly is going on, you know, what service is affected, why it's affected, when we anticipate it passively coming back up and things of that nature. And then even further below that is an actual historical calendar that will show you dates that in the past of when things were down. Um, one thing where that might be helpful is if we if we did catch it anyway, is if students um, are trying to submit homework and they were like, Blackboard was down, I couldn't get anything done last night. Um, you could kind of verify through that whether or not we did have an issue to see if, if something was posted there. Again, though it, it is manually input, so if it was something that we missed, it might not be there, but it, it still could be a good place to look to see if students were complaining about that at any rate. We hope to catch everything and have it on there. Any questions about the status page? All right. And we also have an IT customer support portal where you can submit tickets. Um, it's at supportdesk.grcc.edu. If you go to the IT um, support page on, on the GRCC um, website, there's a link for it there as well. But this is what the landing page looks like. This is where you can submit a request to us. You can report an incident. Um, you can also schedule a virtual visit. So if you wanted to schedule some time for us to look at something on your computer or do a little bit of training, um, you, can, you can do a schedule a virtual visit with us and then we can actually remote into your computer. Um, we also have a knowledge base on here. Um, which is really, really robust. And if you go to it, you can search different things to with how-to instructions on there. So for instance, the instructions for how to print to a personal device, you could find on there um, how to install the VMware. Um, maybe you don't know how to retrieve your voicemail messages. There's detailed instructions on that. So you would just, um, from our search menu on our customer support portal, just put in voicemail. And then you would get all the different knowledge bases uh, in regards to voicemail. Um, so it's, it's a really helpful area to look up information or to submit requests from us. Another nice thing about submitting requests with us through this portal is um, it will guide you to answer questions for us um, depending on what your request is. Um, for instance, if you wanted us to look at, a, at um, some software that you were interested in, it guides you through the process of answering those questions that are needed for that particular request, rather than you just emailing us and then we having to go back to you with questions. Microsoft Office 365 is a suite of applications that um, we have available to us for free and students as well. So please share this if you're a faculty, please make sure to share this with your students and your syllabus um, that they have access to this. Um, that gives them access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, the whole thing. They'll have access to this for as long as they have their GRCC email address. Um, and you can install it on up to five different devices. Rachel, will this be available too if, if a staff member retires and they get the retirement email address? Will they still get this? 
That's a good question, Mary. Um, I want to say yes, but let me let me look into that for you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so again, this is a, a helpful link um, for the instructions for how to install that on your computer, which is also available um, in that PDF that I shared with you, as well as on our portal. Now, again, because I have a Mac, MacBook, I would get that installed, but I only have to, I can only do updates by bringing it into IT for the Microsoft 365. The Office 365 option, that's for your pers any personal device. So you can install that on up to five different devices of yours and, and it will work on, a, on any OS device as well. And you can do that from home or anywhere. But your ish school issued device, yes, those things will need to get updated by us. Okay, so my own MacBook, I can have updated from home then for Office Yes, 365. yep, correct. Do you already have it installed on there? Yeah, is it doing it automatically or is that something it, I need? It might already be doing it automatically if you have it installed on there already. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Well, that concludes um, everything I wanted to go over with you today. Do you guys have any questions for me? Is the J drive backed up? Yes. Yes, the J drive and the S drive. That's why we we... We, let me stop sharing a second here so I can bring you guys over here. Um, yes, so we, um, those are backed up on a continual basis. So we highly recommend that you don't save anything on your work computer desktop um, unless you have also a shortcut to it on your J or S drive. Um, because your actual computer is not big, backed up on a continual basis. So if you something should happen to it unexpectedly, if you have things on your desktop um, that are not backed up elsewhere, there's a really good potential that you will lose that and that those files. So please make sure to be either putting things on your, your Google Drive account or on the J or S drive. And again, the S drive is shared space, so just be mindful that other people have access to those files as well, but your J drive is your personal storage space and you have about 15 gigabytes available to you on that. Any other questions? Oh, can you share your PowerPoint? Yeah, I will share. I'm not sure, let me see if I can. Do a quick screenshot of who all is here, because then I can. Do that. All right. I'm not sure why I'm not seeing. Maybe I'm seeing everybody. Okay, perfect. So I will try to, to share the PowerPoint with you guys as well. Is there any other questions? Rachel. Yeah, Rachel. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Hey, quick question. The J Drive, maybe I, maybe it's just me, but I want to make sure. When I go to my documents, is that into the day Dre driver? It is not. So okay. um, you're okay. like, I don't know if you're in a VMware environment right now. So you would need to be in VMware in order to get to your J drive. Um, okay. the, the documents folder that's on your computer, that's just locally on the computer. And again, any of those files you will want to make sure are stored elsewhere in case of something happens to your computer. And I'll show you real quick here again. Let me. So I just got a new computer not too long ago. And when they up switched things over, most of my files that were in my, my documents came over. Is that because the other computer was still working? Possibly, yep. Yeah. And they try to do a backup oh. of everything for you. Okay. Um, so if you click on this PC, when you're in, you'd have to be in VMware though, because from home you won't be able to see it. And so, Mine aren't connected right at the very moment because I restarted my computer earlier. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but you see there's my J drive and here's my um, S drive. Uh, yeah. Okay. Any so other I questions? I, Pardon? That's, that's, that's so I'd sign into the VMware first and then I can get to it. Correct. Yep. All yep. right. Thank you. 
And do you are you familiar with how to sign into VMware? I have done it before. I think I can figure that out. I just I just assumed it was automatically connected, sharing it there to the right place. So um, I'll get that my stuff moved over. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thank you. Wonder, you're welcome. All right. Well, wonderful. Well, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to email me at any time or give us a call. We're always happy to help. You know, we do have evening and weekend phone hours. Um, we also have a chat feature on our website, so you can communicate with us via that as well. Um, and we're just always happy to help out in any way that we can. Thanks, Rachel. You're welcome. I hope you guys have a great rest of your afternoon. Enjoy the rest of learning day. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Bye.